Two years ago was the official one year anniversary of the unveiling of Vega, at least as far as like what reviewers got and when they could come out with stuff. Which also means that it's the one year anniversary of Tank being part of the UFD tech team. Congrats on being here for an entire year. Yeah, clap it up. <laughs> In commemoration of it being Tank's one year and Vega's one year, we decided to give it another go of the Vega 56 versus its main competitor at the time, which was the 1070, and then its actual competitor, which NVIDIA released a little while later, the 1070 Ti. So we put these cards through its paces. Let's go ahead and examine all of the stats about these cards and see, does Vega do any better than it did a year ago? Is it in a different place? Vega 56, obviously. If you wanna see a Vega 64 comparison, check out hardware unbox video right there. They literally released it today after we were <laughs> already preparing to do this video. So good job, Steve and Tim, you beat us. But before we get to the benchmarks, this video is brought to you by betterhelp.com forward slash UFD. If you're looking for affordable, professional licensed therapist to chat to on your can schedule at your convenience, then you can check out betterhelp.com. Whether you need professional counseling for stressful situations at work, at home, personal issues you're dealing with, or just wanting to converse with somebody who can actually help you through uh, growing as a person, betterhelp.com is there for you with their professional therapists. If you're over 18, their service starts from $35 to $65 per week, which for professional counseling is a steal. And if you need some help financially with that, they do have a sponsorship option available when you complete the survey. So if you want to check them out, head to the link in the video description, betterhelp.com forward slash UFD to get signed up today. It's also a service that I personally use, recommend, and am glad that they decided to come on as a sponsor for. So the cards that we use for the testing are all from Wootware, which if you're in South Africa, definitely check them out to pick up your stuff. We have the Palette 1070 Dual and 1070 Ti Dual. These are more of the budget range cards. These are like literally the least expensive 1070 and 1070 Ti's you could get in the country. And then we have the XFX Vega 56 that we use for our testing. These cards boosted up to like maybe 1.9, 1.95 gigahertz during all of the testing. And we ran everything on a test bench with an 8700K clock to five gigahertz, 16 gigs of RAM at 3200 megahertz. None of that changed. Windows 10, latest drivers, all of that good stuff. We tested several games to make sure that everything was in line. And we also ran all of the games at 2560 by 1440. So essentially 1440p. We did that with high settings with low anti-aliasing, uh, obviously varying it between each game, what that exactly means. But we made sure that they the settings were all the same same across all the benchmarks. There we go. So let's go ahead and start off with Ashes of the Singularity. We see that the 1070 Ti just destroys the Vega 56 and the 1070, and then the 1070 performs better. And this is in DX11. In DX12, it's kind of still the same story. There's about a 12 to 14 FPS difference between the Vega 56 and the 1070. This is supposed to be an AMD game, but the Vega 56 is getting wrecked by the 1070. 1% and 0.1% lows kind of reflect that as well. And then Vulcan uh, is where the Vega 56 actually kind of pulls ahead to be on par with the 1070 Ti. It's having its highest showing there with 74 FPS average, which is still lower than the 1070 in DX11. If you're playing Ashes of the Singularity, run it in Vulcan for your Vega card. But other than that, the 1070 is still going to be a better bet as far as performance. Deus Ex Mankind Divided, we see that the 1070 and the Vega 56 go toe to toe, 38 FPS average, with the 1% 0.1% lows being roughly the same, and the 1070 Ti obviously destroying it outside of that. But in DX12, this is the interesting bit. The Vega 56 actually nearly is on par with the 1070 Ti coming in at 40 FPS average, whereas the 1070 Ti has 41, and then the 1070 has 37. So good job, Vega 56 and DX12. Way to go, Deus Ex, man, kind divided. Far Cry 5 is a close story as well because it's an AMD optimized game. They get the Ryzen Radeon logo at the beginning, and it, the Vega 56 shows up with 79 FPS to the 1070 Ti is 81, so it did, did, did pretty well, which is five FPS better than the 1070. Rise of the Tomb Raider, because Shadow of the Tomb Raider is not out yet, uh, kinda the 1070 and 1070 Ti destroy the Vega 56 here. Uh, DX12 is a little better for the Vega 56. It cripples the 1070, but again, you could just run it at DX11 and get the 92 FPS average. Uh, the 1070 Ti is also crippled in DX12, which isn't good, but again, the Vega 56 
performance in DX12 isn't enough to beat the DX11 performance of either card. Final Fantasy 15, again, another story where Vega 56 loses to both the 1070 and 1070 Ti by six FPS, 50 FPS average for the 1070, 55 for the 1070 Ti, rip. Vega 56. Shadow of Work is the Vega 56, some more confidence, 72 FPS to the 1070 67 and 75 FPS on the 1070 Ti. So uh, well done Vega 56, you competing against a card that didn't even exist when you launched. Assassin's Creed Origins, uh, again, bad showing by Vega 56, 68 FPS average to the 1070 75. Ghost Recon Wildlands, again, Vega 56 loses by three FPS to the 1070 and by 11 FPS to the 1070 Ti. Fortnite, again, 94 FPS for the Vega 56, 112 for the 1070. There is some variability there since it is a multiplayer game, but not enough to actually account for that big of a disparity. PUBG, 71 FPS to the 79 average of the 1070 and 88 on the 1070 Ti. Monster Hunter World, good performance by the Vega 56, 59 FPS there, 61 on the 1070 Ti, 57 on the 1070. Witcher 3, you get 82 FPS uh, for the Vega 56, 83 for the 1070, and 90 for the 1070 Ti, so even Hairworks can't slow it down, except for we turn Hairworks off for the Witcher 3, so as not to like impede it, the Vega, like give the Vega 56 its best chance possible. Why would you introduce like NVIDIA Gameworks stuff on a card that clearly isn't optimized for that? Makes sense to us. Even though it kind of seems like we're stacking the deck against the Vega 56, we turn Hairworks off when we're playing that game anyways, because it just slows down the performance so gosh dang much, and it doesn't enhance the experience enough to make it worth it. Ah, then Hitman, another AMD game, is where they Vega 56 beats the 1070 by 4 FPS with 92, but the 1070 Ti comes in hot at 102 FPS. DX12 again shows performance boost for the Vega, 93 compared to the 1070's 85 and 1070 Ti's 97. But yes, the boost in DX12 isn't enough to bring it over the other cards in their DX11 performance. Rip. Okay, so that's a mixed showing by the Vega 56. It, I mean, it competes with the 1070 Ti in certain places, it destroys the 1070 in certain places, but then it falls flat in others where it doesn't actually even beat either of these two cards, which is a little disappointing after a year of launch. New games have come out, drivers have supposed to be optimized. Uh, maybe Vega 56 will do better in another year's time, uh, and AMD's fine wine technology will eventually kick in, but at, as it stands as a year, it doesn't look like they've had enough performance there. We should also know that Vega 56 cards are still about $50 over their MSRP. Mining Crypto Knight algorithms with this is still basically the best graphics card you can buy for mining. So an average Vega 56 is costing you about $450, whereas an average 1070 is about in the $390 to $400 range, which is roughly MSRP. And then the 1070 Ti is also roughly at the MSRP with the $450 price point. And a 1080 actually is kind of in the $450 price point as well. That makes it so that the Vega 56 kind of looks really rough as far as it's costing. It costs $50 more than this 1070. It costs the exact same price as the 1070 Ti. And there's not a single game where the Vega 56 beat the 1070 Ti. Kind of hard to see that Vega 56 has improved at all over the last year. And there are still those games where Vega can perform phenomenally better than it does in this testing suite. But those are limited they're few and far between, and those can only be applied to the specific games that people want to play with Vega. On a 13 game testing suite, with several of them being AMD optimized games, the Vega 56 falls short most of the time. The only saving grace that I can kind of see with this AMD card at, at the moment is the fact that AMD has their game promotion going on right now with Assassin's Creed Odyssey and those two other games that haven't been released yet. But I mean, that, that knocks $60 off of the purchase price of the card if you were considering picking up Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which brings the cost down to $390, which, I mean, at that point, you could definitely argue uh, you could choose the Vega 56 over the 1070. It's likely gonna perform really well in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Maybe in the long run, we might see that the Vega 56 will be a better choice, but as it stands now, the current benchmarks that we ran, everything kind of looks like it goes in the favor of the NVIDIA cards, and it's kind of, I mean, we're doing the one year update of the Vega 56, but we have the Turing cards right around the corner. Like we were expecting that Vega would have picked up to the point where it definitely beats the 1070 very handedly. So we can be like, well, wait for the RTX 2070. But as it stands now, you don't even have to do that. Once the RTX 2070 drops, which is likely going to be announced this coming Monday, at least the RTX 2080, 
When that happens, these cards are gonna go on massive sale. You're gonna be able to pick one of these up for $250, $300 used, or even $300 brand new, at which point picking up a Vega card makes no sense whatsoever. I'm not really sure where AMD stands in the current market right now. It was a great move by Nvidia to launch the 1070 Ti a few months after. It'll be a year in October, but I mean, this is, this is just bad. So that's it, a year after launch, Vega 56 has barely improved, if at all. Tank has gotten so much better, thankfully. It's not the same situation where we have to compare these uh, two things that existed at the same time here at the UFD Tech channel. But yeah, that, that basically confirms it for me. The Vega 56 looks like it's wearing a corset. That's just the XFX version. Uh, but yeah, I don't see a reason to pick up a Vega 56 at all, unless you're mining, which in case, absolutely, that's still the card to go with. What do you all think about this comparison? Do you have a Vega card? Did you choose it over a 1070 or a 1070 Ti? Which game are you upset with us for, for not testing? I wanna know, which one do, do we need to stack the deck with for Vega to prove that it is superior to the Nvidia card? Because apparently we're Nvidia Shields. Let me know down in the comments. And I also wanna remind you that this video is brought to you by betterhelp.com forward slash UFD. So if you need some affordable counseling from professional licensed therapists, you can check the link in the video description for that. But that's gonna wrap it up for us. Uh, we'll again test things when Turing does launch. Keep posted for that. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this comparison. Hit the like button, especially if you're an AMD fanboy and you wanted Vega to win. Please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.